Hello and welcome to another video by readspro.com where we try to give you insights on REITs and INVITs and today we will talk about the Q2 23-24 results for REITs and we will also try to give you some insights which you can probably benefit from in the future. So my name is Gaurav Jain and I'm an author and a trainer and you can get a copy of these books when you visit our site and you can see the links to these books as well as there are free downloadable resources which you can get hold of so the exhaustive list list for reads for november 23 is as follows there are three office reads and one retail read we'll discuss these one by one on certain parameters and here we are going to discuss reads but soon we'll have one uh, video like this on invits also so do like and subscribe to encourage us on this account so the metrics that we will discuss today would be the dpo or the distributions the assets that the reit has the debt that the reit has the nav that is attributed to each unit of the reit and some insights which we will talk about as well as a certain direction to a youtube video we done earlier we'll refer to that also to help you understand further let's let's just see the metrics first the dpo is uh, the distribution and uh, it's important because it has implications of ta on taxation we've done a detailed video earlier on how dividend is divided into return of capital interest and dividend and why it's done please have a look at that video just the previous video out of this and then the debt of reit which is a percentage of asset values which is LTV and not debt equity ratio like a normal equity stock. And third, very important is the net asset value of a REIT, which is a net of assets and liabilities divided by the number of units. And these are at the market rate, at the fair value. So uh, if you want to understand more about taxation implications and how it will impact you, you can please download this on uh, the PG Invit website. FAQs. That's where you can find this and download this document. The REIT Q2 23-24 DPUs are as follows uh, for all these REITs mentioning their IPO years and the DPOs is here. Let's take up Embassy REIT first. See Embassy, Embassy REIT which gave a DPO of 5 rupees 53 paise. Let's evaluate it on all these fronts of the NAV, the DPO and so on. So the DPO of the Embassy REIT was 5 rupees 53 paise for Q2 23-24 and it was divided as given here interest and other income repayment of loans and tax-free dividend so this is the percentage and the amount given out was 5 rupees 53 paise and it was given out on or before this date as well as the record date being mentioned here on the screen secondly the gross asset value is approximately 52,700 crores broken up as this by segment and the chart below by the region. So if you see a lot of concentration of embassy returns in Bangalore and 93% is the commercial office space, which is why it is an office REIT. The third is the debt part, which is 29% and the floating part is 30% whereas the fixed debt is 70% so it's a little more insulated against fluctuation of interest rates and if it was um, it has a ma major portion of fixed rate and the leverage is 29% whereas the average cost of debt is 7.4% out of which 70% is fixed and these are the ratios given here with uh, the multiples these, these are the ratios given here so uh, the NAV of Embassy REIT happens to be 399. We all know it's trading at a much more discount to NAV right now. It's This is not a recommendation. It's just an observation because the market does not feel the NAV is appropriate. Maybe that's why it is uh, discounting it and the market could as well be right. So the NAV of this uh, REIT is now 399 rupees as on 30th September 2023 and extrapolating the yield. Now the idea here is we extrapolate the yield from half to full year so that's what this whole uh, uh, 
in input is about so you could say that 5 rupees 37 paise was the first quarter now it's 5 rupees 53 paise so 10 rupees 90 paise i multiply that by 2 it gives me 21 rupees 80 paise divided by 310 which is the approximate price in 23 and it's 7 percent per annum now the question for you is that assuming that 22 percent dpu is taxable as other income in this year as per your tax slab how much return percentage do you need in another instrument to beat the yield? so just don't look at this seven percent do this calculation as well that's very important secondly we talked about in our may 23 video that no embassy dpu guidance was there however they have confirmed the guidance this year as on the screen above in their q224 earning call transcript next we come to M mindspace reit which has given a dpu of 4 rupees 93 paise this is again an office reit and its ipo was in 2020 and uh, the uh, it has a simple structure in terms of the interest and in other income is 10% and the tax-free dividend is 90% and the payment dates and record dates are, have been shown on the screen here. And the assets that it holds is 28,700 crores approximately, which are divided into completed assets as 92% and future and under construction is the rest. And the basis and the breakup in geographical uh, uh, assets are is as given above here the major concentration happens to be in uh, hyderabad and mumbai combined and pune in fact uh, all three regions are there 20 uh, percent 37 percent and 36 percent but if you see uh, hyderabad and mumbai are uh, majorly concentrated uh, assets now if you look at the mind space debt then it's 20 percent which is uh, at a cost of debt of 7.8 percent and again there is a certain amount of fixed as well as a floating rate of interest which is here now the nav works out to 370 as given on the screen here uh, the calculations are given in the screen here and these are the fair value of the assets and then the calculation has been arrived at now again let's extrapolate the yield in case of mind space now we can we say that four rupees 80 paise was in uh, Q1, then it was 4.79 and 9.59. So can we say that 19.18 divided by 315 would give us 6% and this is the real yield. Now, again, the question that you need to ask is that if 10% of the DPU is taxed and you are in a certain tax lab, how much percentage do you need in another instrument to build this yield? So this would be definitely much higher than 6%. So if you're looking at an FT, then uh this would be higher than the six percent rate that appears visible to you now coming to brookfield reit the brookfield reit is uh, has a dpu of four rupees 40 paise and again it's an office reit the distribution is given in on the screen as uh, up here on the right hand side and uh, the record date and payment dates are, are also mentioned so uh, the assets held are approximately 28500 crores with uh, operating areas and uh, the uh, construction stages or operating or development potential given here along with the square footage that they have now uh, this also uh, brings us to the debt which is a little higher in case of brookfield which is 34% and this is of the total uh, this is the ltv the NAV of Brookfield REIT is 323 rupees and this is a very interesting chart where there is a column of book value and fair value. So if you see the value, the NAV is the fair value. It's not the book value. A lot of people probably go back to looking at the book value, but in case of REITs, the correct assessment is looking at the fair value from which the NAV is derived. Now the Brookfield REIT, if let's extrapolate this from half year to full year, then it will just translate to 6.88%. Now, what does that mean? That, okay, a, a large part of it is taxable, um, but we are getting 6.88% yield. However, do not miss out the fact that in mid Q1, new assets were added, which were temporarily changed the change they temporarily change the dpu as per the agreement terms and in fact uh, out of the whole quarter uh, the september uh, month was where the total amount was revenues were given out to the reit uh, 
due to the terms of agreement there were certain additions like uh, the uh, income support and everything which was also there which i have detailed in another video we've detailed this in another video earlier on why this happened and what are the streams uh, which will contribute to the q2 uh, revenue and therefore we estimated that this would be above 385 but less than 5 and now it's coming out to 4 rupees 40 paise in q2 so, and in the recent con call uh, they had said that they it should stabilize at around 5 rupees next quarter now the nexus street is <clears throat> a retail rate and they've given out their first dpo of 2 rupees 98 paise uh, the uh, distribution highlights are there on the chart on the left hand side and the distribution mix is here on the right hand side so uh, the Nexus REIT earnings, uh, can we extrapolate from full half? Probably not because the distribution period was between 19th May to 30th September 23. The second part is that in case of a uh, retail REIT, there are multiple earning streams. Now I'll just go on to that in a sh little while. But before that, I'd like to show you the assets uh, value, which is approximately 24,350 crores. And the assets are malls, hotels, and, and some office spaces. And the debt that the Nexus REIT holds uh, is uh, approximately 41653 uh, million uh, rupees, uh, where uh, 14% of it is uh, the, the LTV is 14% and the average cost of debt is 8.3%. And the net asset value is now 138 rupees on, on in case of Nexus Street. And uh, like in the May 23 video, if you've been watching our videos, then we talked about Nexus Street in detail and we talked about the revenue basket, which comprises of multiple earning streams, rental, CAM, revenue sharing, and marketing expenses being some revenue streams in case of a mall. This is very unlike an office street where there is a rental which is fixed as per a rental agreement. Now for invits, if you want a similar content for invits, do encourage us by liking and subscribing to this video. Before we go on to the data chart, a very interesting data chart and a summary of today's video so if uh, you visit our site you will see under resources that there is an option of a whatsapp group this is a group that we uh, have for read and invite investors where they discuss various uh, things regarding reads and invites only and a member had shared this very interesting chart which i am sharing with you to give you a snapshot of the instruments on reads and invites you too can join the group if you wish to now the read summary for 20 30th September 23 is like this. So there's a DPU and debt and NAV component outlined for all these four REITs. And uh, you can have a look here and uh, understand this in a single snapshot. Thank you so much for watching this video. And to write to us, comment, like, and subscribe to our videos. Thank you.